Ever since I picked it up back in October, the 16-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro has been an absolute powerhouse for my creative workflow. Everything I've thrown at it from video editing, designing, development, and even some light gaming has it barely missing a beat. The large color accurate display has contributed a lot to my productivity and makes it a device that I can recommend to any creative that's serious about their work. Today, I'll be giving you guys a look at some of the best apps available for the Mac right now and an idea of how you can fit them into your workflow. My calendar of choice is Google Calendar, but when I don't actually want to use the web version, I just use the built-in one from Apple. They both sync with each other and the interface is super simple which makes it easy to add new events or check what I've planned for the day. I'm not a fan of the built-in mail app though so the client I use is Spark. I really like it because it makes switching between different accounts so easy and it organizes my emails by intelligently categorizing them as notifications, newsletters, or people. I can easily pin important ones that come through right to the top for quick reference later. With that it wouldn't make sense to really go on to any other app but Notion. <sighs> partly because I consider myself to be a Notion addict. Nearly every aspect of my life exists on here in some form. All my videos are planned with the templates I've created, ideas for new content and other businesses are organized, daily and weekly to-dos, all of that can be found within my Notion Life OS. I'm sure you've seen it mentioned before in other videos, but for those of you who aren't familiar, it's a productivity app that lets you create pages with your basic elements like headings, paragraphs, bullets, checkboxes, but also more complex databases like tables, lists, and boards, which are all just different ways to display data. I use a table in my YouTube video template for my shot list with a bunch of different columns with information about the shot. Every B-roll clip that goes on top of this talking head footage is found on here. I number each one so that it's easy to find in the edit, then quickly describe the shot itself, the angle, how I'll be shooting it, and where in the script that it needs to go. There's a bunch of other ways that I use the app, but I don't want to go in too much depth today, especially because it would make this like a 25 minute video. So if that's, if that's something you want to see, I'll get cooking. Another one of the apps that I use for notes is actually just the stock Apple Notes app. Because I'm so invested in the Apple ecosystem and the app syncs up with my iPhone and iPad, it makes it super easy to jot down a quick idea I have on my phone and then reference it later on my MacBook. With iPadOS 15 and macOS Monterey, Apple brought QuickNote, which is another reason that I like the Notes app so much. I can quickly drag out from the right corner and jot down whatever I'm thinking. This has been super convenient because I always get my best creative ideas during this the most random times honestly pretty much every single one of my intro ideas has came to me while i was working out so i'll have to go over to my watch pause my workout and then run over my phone before i forget when it comes to taking more complex notes though i use the app notability this is another note taking app that is cross-platform on both ios slash ipad os and mac os i use it the most with my ipad because of the apple pencil support which makes taking handwritten notes a breeze. Anything I jot down on here can be quickly pulled up on my Mac whenever I want to see it. Most recently, I've been using it to storyboard out all my cinematic intros and jot down thumbnail ideas so that I can get a better idea for how I want a shot to look before I snap. While I import almost all the footage I film from my SD card to my Mac, there are still times where I'll go on to OBS on the PC, mostly in gaming videos. So this would be like a recording of a peripheral software that's only on Windows, or some gameplay. This is when I turn to Google Drive, which I treat at this point almost as a universal airdrop. I can quickly upload an MP4 or a screenshot and go over to my Mac and download it with ease. It's nowhere near as convenient as airdrop or just importing it from a physical drive, but it still works perfectly fine for my needs. You can use the web interface or download the Drive Mac app so that you can access it in Finder. It works just like any other tab, you just click on it and now you're given access to all the files in your drive. Staying in the realm of Google, my browser of choice is Google Chrome. Over time, I found that I prefer the design and functionality of it over Safari, the tools it gives for web development, and the extensions are definitely something keeping me in. For whatever reason, in 2022, there are still designers that want me to fry my eyes every time I load their website, so I have Dark Reader, which allows me to style every page that I'm on to dark mode. It works flawlessly the majority of the time, but there are certain sites that don't work well and will make text unreadable. Luckily, it's super simple to disable the extension for sites like this or ones that already have dark mode enabled. All you gotta do is press on the extension and then disable it for that URL. I'll constantly be changing up the design of my website, so I have this color eye dropper as well as the CSS peeper, which allows me to see how a certain element style so I can take some inspiration from it in my design. Because I'm always making investments for the channel and buying new gadgets, it's nice to have Honey to see if any deals are available. I also have Grammarly to check my writing for any mistakes, which is helpful when it's 3 a.m. and I'm trying to finish up that script before hitting the hay. Then lastly, I have a couple of extensions for web development, one that allows me to resize the window to ensure my design is responsive, tools for using React.js, and Lighthouse, which allows me to test the performance of a site I'm working on. Speaking of, it's not looking good. When browsing the web to figure out how to center a div or what camera monitor I should buy, I use NordVPN to stay safe when using public Wi-Fi or when at school. I have it downloaded on all of my devices and it makes it easy to quickly connect to a server to protect my identity. Now once I finally find my solution on Stack Overflow, I load up my text editor of choice, which is VS Code. I love the way it looks and the amount of customization possibilities it has with themes. Although hands down the thing I love the most is the insane amount of extensions they have so that it can make your development process a whole lot easier. Among my favorite are Project Manager, which allows me to quickly switch to a completely different coding project, also in front of me in the middle of taking a course and want to switch up to working on my site and apply what I've learned. There's auto renaming tags, Prettier, which formats my code automatically, and Bracket Pair Colorizer, which makes it easy to keep track of different code blocks. My favorite app for designing sites at the moment is Figma. I 
used Sketch for about a year and I'm kind of trying out Adobe XD, but when a design course I took was based in Figma, I gave it a try and fell in love. It is web-based so you can access it on literally any device, but I found the editor to be very easy to use and snappy. They have a very generous free plan, which has allowed me to mock up interfaces as well as brand new material without paying a penny. Although I do intend on purchasing a subscription in the future as it's an app I really do enjoy using. When I'm working, I'll either be listening to music or a podcast, so Spotify comes in handy. Having both consolidated into one app is nice, but I found that the discoverability for new music has been so much better compared to Apple Music, as well as I found the user interface a lot easier to navigate. Additionally, I just love that I'm able to control my music across devices and quickly switch between audio outputs. This comes in handy because I'm constantly switching from working on my laptop to pulling out my phone and then writing on my iPad. I'm honestly surprised that despite how integrated Apple's ecosystem is, they haven't implemented their own version of this yet in Apple Music. To edit videos like the one you're watching now, I use Final Cut Pro 10. I used Premiere Pro exclusively for a solid 10 months, but once I got this Mac, I downloaded the free 90 day trial of Final Cut and have not gone back yet. With it being created by Apple, it's optimized extremely well and feels really snappy. It definitely has its quirks like the magnetic timeline, but I've got to a point where I'm very comfortable with it and can edit honestly a lot faster than I ever did in Premiere. I highly recommend that anyone who has a Mac, especially if it's an older model, to try a Final Cut because chances are it's going to run a lot better than any other program. I still like and use a ton of Adobe's products, but when it comes to video, Final Cut's the way to go. Now that we've got video out of the way, I use Lightroom to edit all the photos I share on Instagram. I like to use my iPad to edit a lot of the time, and this works great because all the photos that I upload are synced across all my devices in the Creative Cloud. I find it relatively simple to use for making quick adjustments to photos, but I'm still learning more about how to make more complex edits. Speaking of, I recently just started learning Photoshop so that I can up my thumbnail game. Everyone already knows what Photoshop is, so I'm not going to go in depth with it, but if you are willing to pay that Creative Cloud subscription, it is a very powerful tool. Another app I use also from Adobe is Illustrator. I've recently gotten more interested in graphic design, more specifically branding such logos and wallpapers. I really like how Illustrator works for this and I want to keep improving my skills. I was playing around here a little bit with the gradient tools to come up with some cool redesigns for my Just Create wallpapers. If you want to download these for yourself, keep an eye out on my social channels as I'll be making these available soon. And to wrap it up, the last app you should check out on Mac is Steam. <laughs> hold up, hold up, before you click away, Hear me out. While I know the Mac is not meant for gaming, there are still quite a few titles that run pretty well on here. You can go to a page on the store for games that are available to download, and they have a refund policy that lets you return a game if you played less than two hours and purchased within a 14-day period, so you have more than enough time to see if something runs well. While I'm definitely not playing at ultra settings, I was still able to have a very pleasant experience while away, even able to push Life is Strange at 4K at roughly around 25 to 30 FPS. For the few games that can run this high, the 120Hz ProMotion display ups your experience significantly. And with that, these are in my opinion some of the best apps that you can get for the m1 pro macbooks this laptop is an absolute monster and apple deserves some serious credit all these apps are used constantly in my creative workflow and help me to stay productive except for steam the 16 inch display makes working on the go a breeze and the buttery smooth 120 hertz and insane color accuracy makes it hard to ever go back to my ultra wide monitor but with that said i hope that was able to give you guys an idea of how you can use your mac in the best way possible but of course if there's still apps that you think i should have mentioned please leave them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to stay tuned to the channel because I gotta go organize all these Mac accessories for when we chat next time. As always, I appreciate everyone who's made it to this point in the video. For now, I'm out. Take care.